Well, good morning to you all, and this is Good Friday, and our reading this morning, as you can see, I'm in St. Bart's, and the reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 27. Along the way, they came on a man from Cyrene named Simon, and made him carry Jesus' cross. Arriving at Golgotha, the place they call Skull, they offered him a mild painkiller, a mixture of wine and myrrh, but when he tasted it, he wouldn't drink it. After they had finished nailing him to the cross and were waiting for him to die, they whiled away the time by throwing dice for his clothes. Above his hat, head they posted the criminal charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Along with him, they also crucified two criminals, one to his right, the other to his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mock. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself. If you're really God's son, come down from that cross. The high priest, along with the religious leaders, were right there mixing it up with the rest of them, having a great time poking fun at him. He saved others. He can't save himself. King of Israel, is he? Then let him get down from that cross. We'll all become believers then. Ah, he was so sure of God. Well, let him rescue his son now, if he wants to. He did claim to be God's son, didn't he? Even the two criminals crucified next to him joined in the mockery. From noon to three, the whole earth was dark. Around that mid-afternoon, Jesus groaned out, crying loudly, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some bystanders who heard him said, he's calling for Elijah. One of them ran and got a sponge soaked in sour wine and lifted it on a stick so he could drink. The others joked, don't be in such a hurry. Let's see if Elijah comes and saves him. But Jesus again, crying out loudly, breathed his last. And at that moment, the temple curtain was ripped in two. Top to bottom, there was an earthquake and rocks were split to pieces. What's more, tombs were opened and many bodies of believers asleep in their graves were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they left the tombs, entered the holy city and appeared to many. The captain of the guard and those with him, when they saw the earthquake and everything else that was happening, were scared to death. They said, this has to be the Son of God. There were also quite a few women watching from a distance, women who'd followed Jesus from Galilee in order to serve him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the Zebedee brothers. That was a reading from uh, the message, which is why it was slightly different. But on this Good Friday, we have... Uh, for us, we have read for us. What someone has said to me is the uh, total, perfect, unique, ultimate self-isolation. Self, because Jesus chose to do it. And isolation, isolated from his friends, isolated from his disciples, isolated from his family, isolated from his mother. And of course, isolated from God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And yet Jesus did that for you. And he did that for me. He took all that punishment for you and for me. One of the most interesting uh, features of that particular passage is where it says that the, t the curtain in the temple was torn in two. And the curtain in the temple was that curtain which divided off uh, the whole of the rest of the temple away, away from the Holy of Holies. And no one, except a high priest once a year, no one was allowed in to the presence of God. Yet now that curtain was torn in two. And notice that it wasn't torn in two as you and I would do it, from the bottom upwards but was torn in two from the top downwards, top to bottom. In other words, it's God. When Jesus died, it's God 
who tore that curtain in two, which opened the way for all of us to enter his presence. Jesus' death on the cross was not just our forgiveness, but it also opened for us the, the gate of glory. It opened for us the way to heaven itself. And so today we remember everything that Jesus did for us. Uh, as you know, I, I, I haven't been allowed uh, to actually do a communion service actually on screen, uh, a virtual communion service, so I can't do that for you, I'm afraid. I'm not allowed to. But what I can do is I can suggest you do what Susie and I do occasionally, and it's something which you can do very simply at home. And it doesn't matter that you're at home. It doesn't matter even if you're on your own. And that is to remember what Jesus did. Take that bread, any bit of bread, and just say, Jesus, thank you that when you died, by faith in you, I've become part of your family. We're all part of the one body. We're all part of his family. Thank you, Jesus, that when you opened that gate, we became a member of your family. And then take that cup of wine, and as you take, or whatever it happens to be, or juice, whatever it is, it'd be lovely to do it with your family, lovely to do it with your children, just explain it to them. You take that cup, and you just drink, and you just say, Jesus, thank you that that cost you your life for me. Thank you that your blood was shed for me and open up that new and living way. So as I close today, can I uh, repeat the words of this great hymn by Isaac Watts, which we would have sung just outside here on the uh, tomb there. We'd have sung it together as a church is together, but uh, obviously we can't do that today. So let me uh, read these words. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the cross of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love, flow mingling down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? With a whole realm of nature mine, there were an offering far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. <laughs>